Hello, I'm Dennis Kelderman with the Cessna Structures Group. Today I'd like to uh, look with you at some techniques and some uh, different tools that we can be using for the evaluation of dents, scratches, gouges, and such. Uh, right now what we're wanting to look at is uh, the use of feeler gauge for evaluation for this type of structural damage. And uh, I'm going to try to give you a little bit of pros and cons of, of this device as well, and so I'll try to remember to do that. Uh, I've got here this morning a, a feeler gauge set that uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with, uh, feeler gauges, but they give varied thicknesses. Um, if you're purchasing these, you can get these very uh, narrow and skinny. Uh, for reduced profiles is very uh, wide as well. Sometimes they're very long, sometimes they'll have a bend in them uh, just so ergonomically they get in and out of the areas that we want to uh, be evaluating well. I also have a uh, kind of a homemade shop aid in which I have about every sheet metal that we've ever used <laughs> it would look like on, from Cessna's viewpoint. And I've got as uh, thin as ten thousandths and as well as thick as a tenth of an inch or a hundred thousandths. So I've got an, an example here in which we're looking over the, the part and thinking, of what, what on this part can I evaluate using a feeler gauge? And uh, the, the first thing that we run into is some of the con side of the feeler gauge, and that is on the normal dent type damage, the profile on our feeler gauge is too wide to be able to fit on the bottom of the dent. So in this case, what we're most likely to be able to evaluate is something on the edge of the part. So what I'm going to do here is take a bucking bar as a straight edge. And if you can see this on the camera, but we'll be evaluating this gap. And you'll see in the video that, and in this presentation, that really the best place for damage evaluation uh, involving a feeler gauge would be gap. And so I set this down, get some feeler gauges set up here. And feeler gauges are just a, a trial and error method in which I have to maintain my, my straight edge. Here I've got 50 thousandths in here. It's too thin. I happen to know that this gap is right at 60 thousandths, and I just happen to have some 60 thousandths. Remember, we don't want too much resistance because then we're really uh, looking at a dimension that is greater than our, than our gap. And here we have 60 thousandths is fitting directly in there. I also have another part here that provides a good example of the use of feeler gauge. And we look all over this thing and think, where can we use a feeler gauge? And on the back side here, we, we've got a gap. I'll take this same 60 thousandths, slide it in there. That's too thin. And uh, we'll just go ahead and try that big kahuna, the one tenth of an inch. And sure enough, it's a perfect fit. So there's an example of using feeler gauges. Most of the time, evaluating structural sheet metal damage, structural uh, damage of, of any kind, we're going to be looking at gaps. And like I said, the negative side is that the width of the profile of the feeler gauge is too wide to fit in the base of most damage that we're evaluating. Well, that's it for feeler gauges. We appreciate your taking a look at this video. Anytime you have any kind of structural concern of any kind for your Cessna aircraft from 120 through 750, we are glad to help you in the Cessna Structures Group. Give us a call at 316-517-6.
0061. Thank you.